Hello, welcome to Fender Play Live. I'm Eugene Edwards, and today we have a bass episode. This is for you four string thumpers out there. Congratulations, we, we, we see you. We've got an awesome returning guest who's gonna teach us all about the versatility and the value of the pentatonic scale on the bass and show some tips on how you can use it to write your own bass lines. It's gonna be a lot of fun, but guitarists, don't tune out because this is helpful for you too. We're gonna, we're gonna show you how. Um, and helping us with today's topic is a long-awaited uh, return guest. Divinity Rocks. Divinity, say hello. Yo, what's up? It's Divinity yeah, Rocks. So good much. to be here once again. So excited. So excited. Um, and we're also joined, as always, by the one and the only Dylan Calajuri. Dr. Dylan, where are you? Hey, guys. Hey, everybody. Welcome. Welcome. Look at yes. you and your, your fancy little setup there. I know. Isn't this this is nice? Right? Yeah. This is nice. I'm going to get a lava lamp, too. So <laughs> okay. it's going to be really oh, great. Boy. He's settling in. He's settling <laughs> in. He's taking over. Listen, Divinity is a multifaceted musician, recording artist, and composer who's worked with everybody from Victor Wooten to Beyonce. She's even played for Barack Obama at the White House. Wow. We're honored. To, so I don't think she's going to be nervous about today's show. Let's put it that way. <laughs> We're honored to have you here, Divinity, as always. And, and, and before we get going here, can you tell us what your plan? What you're, what you're holding there and, and show it off, please. Well, I am playing this beautiful four string uh, Fender Ultra Jazz Bass. It's custom. There's not another one like it in the world. Uh, maple neck, rosewood fretboard, and my very special noiseless frets. But what really makes it special is this. Oh, you can't really see it because of the color and the lighting. Is it, oh, the pick, a pearl pick, uh, oh, yeah. perloid pick guard. Wow. We're getting that. In one piece. It's party. Oh, yeah. So, and, and can we hear it? Oh, yeah. I mean, no, we'll be hearing it, but show off a little bit. <laughs> yeah, I'm the major third. Beautiful. <laughs> now, it, okay. So for those of you who are just watching that, uh, it's an optical illusion. It's not a fretless. Her vibrato is just so smooth. She makes it sound right. You make it sound like a fretless. Is that right? Really? I've never Did, heard I thought, that Dylan, before. It, Nobody's ever said that to me before. That's cool. Oh come on. Oh, it's the cello, the cello effect. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Is yeah. yes. that what it okay. is? Okay. Yeah. I think. So. And Dylan, what do you have? Oh, I, I'm playing. Uh, this is a, a, a an American Professional Two. Nice. Jazz bass and Olympic. I'm sorry. This is an ultra P oh, bass. Ultra. I apologize. Uh, yeah, it's an ultra P bass. It's got active electronics. It's got a whole lot of things. I can control the space shuttle Atlantis from here if I want. Huh. <laughs> yeah, it's really it's advanced. He's, so uh, check it out. Listen to this. Anyways, this this bass. You'll get to hear more of it later. This thing it'll hurt you. It's yeah, nice. it'll hurt you bad. So. And, speaking yeah. of, and I have the American Pro tele, uh, American Pro Two Telecaster in Sienna Sunburst, uh, but mm. but I won't really be playing much today, believe me, uh, because we've got Divinity here and she's got a lot to cover. Now we want to clarify that even though we're focused on bass today, this scale is a tool for writing riffs, uh, originalized almost on, on any instrument. So if you have any questions, please drop them in the comments as usual, and we'll try and get to them as we go along. Now let's start out with the basics. Um, let's hear the pentatonic scale on bass. Uh, Divinity, can you play something that you uses this scale please uh, just you want me to play a song that uses this scale um, sure sure let's, let's just like see. get a feel for it hey <laughs> you like the sound effects <laughs> I do <laughs> I, I do it. though. See, I love yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. The family yeah, like, yeah. And that, mm -hmm. that's like the, that's like the minor pentatonic, which I think most funk and like rock music really rely on that minor pentatonic. It's really fun to play. You can really do a lot with that one. So that's that's a song that's based off of that. That's good. Well, so well, let's start at the beginning and talk about the concepts first. What, Divinity, what is the pentatonic scale for the beginners out there? So the pentatonic scale is a five-note scale 
that is based off of, for instance, a major pentatonic is based off of the seven note scale that we are all so familiar with, right? Mm -hmm. Except that the pentatonic scale consists of five notes and we take away two notes out of that seven note scale. And the two notes we take away are the four, the, the fourth scale degree and the seventh scale degree. So instead of playing a G major scale, we're going to play a G pentatonic scale with five notes. The five notes in the G pentatonic scale, for instance, G major pentatonic scale, are G, A, B, D, E. And now we're going to go back to that G to start it all over again, right? Mm hmm So that's the G major pentatonic scale. There you go. So five it's just notes. a five note scale and because we're removing two notes from a normal seven note scale. And are, are there different versions? I mean, it's five notes, but can we move around which five notes to use? You mentioned minor uh, with the with Larry Graham bass line. Um, are there different modes? What can you tell us about that? Yeah. So, I mean, you know, when we talk about modes, I know everybody really gets excited when we talk about modes and <laughs> yeah, what they are yeah. and how to use them. And they can be so confusing. But a note, a mode is basically just a reorganization of the notes in the, in the key. So if we are in the key of G major, for instance, we have five different places we could start within that pentatonic scale and play different shapes and different organizations of the notes based on that key. So we're in the key of G major, and we already played the pentatonic scale, which has a very specific shape in the key of G. So let's start with the, let's start with the first one again. Very specific shape, and it's kind of like mm -hmm. a little box shape. It sits about right here, and that is the first mode we would call uh, I guess we call it the first mode on the pentaton of the pentatonic scale in the key of G. So when we start talking about the second mode, what we do is we start on the second scale degree. We talked about the notes in, art in order, starting with G. The next note would be A. So instead of starting on G, which is the root, we would start on A and get a second mode. So that's what we call the second mode. And it's going to give you a very specific shape. The second mode, and but it consists of all the same notes. Right, right. right. You're so just starting from a different spot. You're just starting from a different. Love it. Yeah. All right. So let's try that again. We're gonna okay. say we're gonna play the same notes. A, B, D, E. I'm sorry. <laughs> Don't this isn't it's always like this when you're in front of a camera, right? So you or, sit or, around or, or when, when you, in your room yes. and you play yes. it and you're like, Oh yeah, man, I'm killing it and this is so good. Burn it up. But now And then we stop get, and think about it. It's just the yeah. Yes. So, <laughs> so the second mode of the G major or G pentatonic scale, we're gonna start on A. We're going to play B, we're going to play D, E, G, A, B, E. Yeah. Right? It's a, so, a completely different, it, it's, a, it's, it's a completely evocative of something shape. else, yeah. but you use the same notes. Again, you just reorder them a bit. Right. Nice. So now, and I know that I think you mentioned that, um, well, actually we have a couple of questions here. Scott Fogelman asked, if minor is good for funk and rock, what is the major pentatonic best used for? A lot of people use the major pentatonic, I think, in, in, in pop music. Because mm -hmm. most pop music, mm. I would say, leans on the major scale, right? So yes. I think that that's that's where we really see it uh, see it being used mostly. But let's not let's not fin let's not get away from the modes now. I want to get back to right, the right, modes. So we played the second mode. Now we're gonna move to the third mode, which is which is a different shape, and it's gonna start on the third scale degree, which is B. Right. So we mm, have G makes sense. A and B, and it's the third. <laughs> One more time. Mm -hmm. Let's 
go back down to the second. Back to G. See how it's all connected? It's really cool how it's all connected. Very cool. Yes. Now we have two more because we've played three of them. So let's go to the next one, which a lot of people say, a lot of people call it the fourth scale, the fourth mode. I like to think about it as the fifth, right? Because mm -hmm. it is on the fifth scale degree of the key of G. Yeah, right? it keeps it straight. It mm -hmm. keeps it straight in my head, right? Yep. Because I'm thinking about the, the, the notes as they're related to the key. And mm -hmm. this, so this would be the fifth starting on D. This is the shape. Right? Yes. Let's go back down to the third. Back down to the second. Back to one. Wow, so we've played pretty far down the neck so far. Covered right? a lot of the neck, yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's what's really cool about the scale. A lot of people use it, it covers a lot of the neck. And as a bass player, oftentimes it's easy and it's really fun and cool to play the pentatonic scale because you're staying out of the way of the other instrumentalists, like our favorite guitar players who like the mm -hmm. right? Yes, <laughs> yes. So we get to kind of stay out of their way by playing the pentatonic scale. So there's one more, and this is the minor pentatonic. And because we're in the key of G, we're gonna play this on E, right? This is the sixth scale degree. But it's the fifth mode. Ha ha, you got that? You got that? I think you got That's that. a bit of it. Yes, I'm, I'm following you. Right? This is mm -hmm. the shape. All right. So you want to go you want to go back down? My bad. That's the fifth, third, mm -hmm. second, back to the one. Cool. And there we have it. Those are all the five modes, all the five shapes. Still five shapes, five modes. And now a lot of students ask about learning modes early. Why do you think starting with the pentatonic is the best place to start when they, I mean, do you know what I mean? Like, it, like this seems, I mean, it, there's clarity there where you just ran through it, but, but why do you think it really helps a, the, a, a player who wants to learn modes? I think it really helps. Um, you know, when I, when I, when I've taught bass and had students who were struggling with the, the, the seven modes that we generally introduce students to, um, mm -hmm. The issue becomes like, well, how do I use it? How do I create when I'm sitting at home by myself? How do I sound musical? <laughs> you yeah. know what I mean? Because at the mm -hmm. end of the day, that's what it's about. We want to sound musical. And so I like to start them off with a minor pentatonic scale so that when they start playing and they dig in, they feel like they're making music immediately. Okay. Right? Yeah. So when you look at... One, one, one of my favorites, I think, is the, is the F minor pentatonic scale. And I like it because F huh. is the lowest. Well, it's, it's only because I want to do some fret work, right? So F is the lowest fretted note on the, on the bass guitar, right? So right. if I start here. Right, so that's the F minor. Oh, you heard that time. <laughs> right, so we funky. <laughs> so we can move between the different modes. If we start here on F, we know that going uh going up a minor third, we come back to the first mode, right? Right, because you just flipped it. Yep. 
Right. So now we can connect mm-hmm. those two together. So that's one of the reasons, that's one of the ways I really like to to start with that minor. Go up to this major, go up to the second. Yeah. Yeah, connected it. There's so much and it gives it gives such form and on all these sort of these mar- these signposts up and down the neck, right? You've got these really safe spots to hit yes. and and staying in that yeah, in that scale. Now, this question Dylan, take this one. This is from uh sure. uh from Robert Adamchick asking, does this mode of, uh theory apply to six-string guitars? Absolutely, Robert. That's a great question too. And you know what? This Mode is a mathematical term that that just lends itself to a resetching of different mm-hmm. uh, or the same group of things. And like the modes themselves actually come from Pythagoras in an extremely old period of time. That's why they're named Dorian, Phrygian, Mixolydian. Those were right. islands near Crete in, in like literally before Christ. I mean, we're talking a long time ago. Mm-hmm. So this is a very old... Uh, way to use number sets and um, it sounds really complicated but you know as we go on if, if you're new just hang out and it's going to continue to unravel. Right, exactly. Well, you start with the pentatonic, and then and yes, uh, but 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 and we do have lessons. And by, by, uh, in fact, someone uh, by the, the handle of JC says it might be time for me to pick up a bass. Mm. Do it, JC. Do Go it. for it, JC. Do it, JC. Get a fender. <laughs> you won't regret do it. it. Do it. <laughs> now, Dylan, what lessons do we have on the site to get us started on what Davini's sharing with us today? Yeah, and see, that's you know when you guys were talking about why why does Divinity show this to bass students first? I think this is. One of the reasons we show this to students first a lot of times is because it's a, maybe a little bit easier to play for them than a lot of the three note per string or multiple note per string scales known as the uh, major and minor scale and its mm-hmm. modes. Also, there's a great video of Bobby McFerrin where he like yes! jumps from one note to the next yes! note and he asks the audience to sing what notes they think are going to come forward and they sing a pentatonic scale I Yes, know. because I- it's in your ear. Yes, you know? I, I, I mention that video all the time with my private students when it, when that's I covered great. this scale. It was really so instructive. That, that, that's fantastic that you mentioned that, Dylan. I love yeah. that you mentioned that. And you guys can check it out, but you have to wait till after the show. Yes, <laughs> please. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so I'm no, sorry. But, d- yeah, go ahead, yeah, sorry. Dylan. No. Uh, so there's a ton of, like, like you've come to the right place, right? Because Divinity is an amazing player. She, she's just extremely charismatic, and the playing is absolutely fantastic. And I think... A great place to go and unpack a lot of what she's talking about even further is Fender playing to check out. We've got ABCs of the A minor pentatonic scale, both on guitar and bass, but specifically on bass. Um, this is really going to like, you know, I, I hate to say soup to nuts again, but it's a great way to describe it. I mean, you're going to start at the very beginning of what this is in a way where you can stop and start at your pace and decide, OK, I need to know more about this or less and move you through that course until you you confidently can do everything that she just did. So this is accessible to you. Don't be discouraged by its uh, technical means and her amazing playing, of course. Absolutely. And also, when, when you when you start going through these things as scales, you will start to hear songs. In, you'll say, hey, wait a minute. This yeah. sounds a little bit like this song I like. And we most likely have the song going uh, hooking up right there with it. Right. Um, speaking of, okay, so now that we know what the scale is, let's show how what we can do with it when it's used for a bass line. Then we'll go into writing our own line. So, Divinity, can we hear some bass lines that use the pentatonic scale in action? Um, well, one of my favorites. <laughs> yes. Yes. I gotta turn. Can I? Can I just? Can I turn this up just like? Fine by me. me. Fine by me. I'm. I'm not the engineer, but I'm go ready. for it. Okay. I'm hey, ready. Engineer, I'm gonna just bump it like two dB <laughs> in my ear, and it's gonna probably be in yours too. So. Hee 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 hee. I believe you guys have this on the website, right, Brick? I believe mm-hmm. so. How? House. It's your mind, your mind. Yeah. That's one of my favorites. Um, there's another one that I really that I just started listening to. I hadn't heard it in a long time. Um, and a great, incredible artist by the name of Betty Davis, who just passed away. Uh, I know. She was an innovative, incredible artist. A lot of people 
only know her from having been married to uh, to Miles Davis. Miles, yeah. But yeah. she was a force. <laughs> yeah. That's it. And she had a lot of great play- bass players playing with her. This is one of her bass lines. Called Anti-Love. <laughs> I really love that bass line. It's so funky. You got to check out that album. Um, so Brick House, uh, that one. Um, I mean, there are just so many because... Uh, ah. Ah. Yes. I Shot the Sheriff. The, That's the right. intro to I Shot the Sheriff is based on a pentatonic scale. So simple, so cool, and it's so iconic. So all of these iconic records that we've grown up listening to, that we love, they utilize this scale, and that's why you can be in an audience. You can be an artist like Bobby McFerrin and ask the audience what's going to come next, and they already hear it. Right. I don't think people give, them, give the audience enough credit mm. for their musical knowledge. We've been mm-hmm. listening to music for so long that all of this stuff we have internalized and we may not have words for, we may not understand the history of it, right? So when we start playing music and we start listening and learning from people like Dylan and, yeah. you know, we start learning that, wow, these names of these modes come from ancient Greece and, you know, right. like... <laughs> So yeah. you start you start putting all this stuff together. It's pretty cool, right? Yeah, it it, 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 it connects you to Sly Stone, and it connects you to yes. like the Parthenon. Yes, the Parthenon, exactly. yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's so funny. So we have several shout outs before we next to the the the, 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 uh, the the next part. Michael Hastings says I could listen to Divinity play all day. Amazing. Oh, yeah, so Mountain, we're, we're with you, Michael. Of course. Charles you. Bonsu says I'm switching to bass guitar. We, you have a converter. Wow, you've converted. <laughs> Wait, did we convert Sean, him? I've Apparently, it, yeah. it's a done deal. Sean Brisbane says, this, the is, bathtub. "This is great instruction," uh, says Sean Brisbane. And a question oh. from from Eric: What is a good way to practice these modes to help lo- uh, uh, lock them in without feeling too robotic? So maybe mm. this is where we talk about maybe divinity is where we start coming up with our own lines. Yeah. Yeah. So I think part of that comes from. First, you have to be really familiar with the scale. And so I think that, you know, turning on a metronome and playing them, I was always taught to play my scales musically. Mm. Even So don't play them robotically. Right? So that doesn't sound like music, but I'm going to play that same scale. <laughs> So I'm playing the same scale and I'm playing it in the same order that I would play it. But you kind of give it a give it some groove. What are well, the other the elements in music exactly? What are the other elements? The the two through ten, as Mr. Victor Wooten would say. That <laughs> two through ten. Two through ten. We always thinking about the notes, but what about the articulation? What about the feel? What about the intention? What about the rhythm, the space? Mm-hmm. All of those things are what really make music what it is. Yeah. The notes are a major part of it, but how we play those notes are what really matters. So one of the things that that I remember learning and, and doing when I first started working around working with the pentatonic scale was really trying to connect them, connect all the modes together. So I'm starting here on this minor pentatonic. So and then I'm gonna go here and I'm gonna actually let's do something like this. Let's let's ascend. Let's ascend on the minor pentatonic and let's yes. descend. Ah. So let's ascend on the less. Oh, yeah, look who's got a glitch. That That's post. it. Just as, yeah, we'll yeah. Fix, yeah. Yeah. fix it. Post. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, that's a good one. Descend coming down the second mode, right? Wow. 
right? So we're going to ascend the next mode. Right? And we're going to descend the following mode. Right? So that's a good way to connect them. Wow. Right? Interesting. I have to yeah, think about you're, you're shuffling. I, you're, I know. <laughs> well, I, well you're, I was trying to do it here. I was like, oh, wait a minute. Well, oh, wait. I, I had to stop and think about that, too. You're shuffling. Uh, the different modes uh, uh, and then also you're going backwards and forward but yet while you do that it does all feel of one piece that's kind of what's really really interesting about that because we're that it does the feel same like it's, five notes <laughs> right it's all in the same house and and yeah. so that's really really uh, god that's really instructive that's fantastic so uh, now so what are the tips do you have for for again for creating a baseline uh, uh, using this so I mean you know I think two through ten is extremely important I mm -hmm. think you know, identifying a mode that you want to play in. Um, for me, it's the funky, it's the funky pentatonic minor. I mean, it's just so funky um, that I like to play around in that particular mode. Hey, hey. Uh huh. Oh, that's funky. <laughs> That's a bass line. <laughs> and I'm playing all the notes, but you don't have to play all those notes. You know, the, right. the, the bass lines that we were uh, that we were showing you, they only utilized a few of those notes. Uh, here's one uh, low rider, right? Sure. All my friends. <laughs> That's funky. That is so funky. Sometimes I like to sit around and try to figure out, like, how did they come up with that groove using that scale? Uh, but mm. it's so good. Divinity, that one's so good. They don't do anything other than that line on the whole record. Cowbell. It just stays on it. It just stays there. They don't switch, change a chord. They don't come up. Yeah. Don't, the whole thing just cruises like a low ride. It just stays nice and steady. It. Oh, my God. What a great record. That's a great example. Um, now Dylan, before we hear one last original song from Dimitity, and this is going to be, that's going to be cool. Can you give <laughs> us some song examples for viewers to check out after the show that use the pentatonic songs from the site? Absolutely. Yeah. So in addition to like using the site as a resource to help you build and learn these scales, uh, there's as divinity was pointing out like there's a lot of songs that mean a lot to us as a culture that mm -hmm. that use the pentatonic scale so i'll play the first one you tell me if you recognize it so let's see <laughs> hey <Ooh>. everybody recognize it <laughs> it's another one bites another one bites the dust i know so it's the e minor pentatonic scale right so and, and you notice like with a lot of these you can the bass could carry the song. Yeah, right? they don't even need the the other people could not even show up, and the bass would be. You would know exactly what song it is, mm -hmm. where you're at, and everything. That's how like endemic these scales. Are. And like Divinity point, and now that one's that's just three notes. That's it's just three notes. Five there for that one line. You're right. It's it's just like you said. You don't have to use all of them. Uh, what's another one? Okay, so another great one. Uh, I feel Long Beach. Hey. And that sliding technique, uh, there was a question earlier about how to, to practice these and make them sound, you know, not robotic. A great right. way is pick a technique and go through the scales using that technique. So you could try using all hammer-ons, you know. Which is not something you would necessarily do in normal playing. But it'll give you a little, a little uh, trick to sort of kind of add musicality to this as you're learning it, right? Yeah. And the same thing with sliding. So you could try it. And that, that type of Great. thing is going to be, if you have to slide to everything, you're going to have to connect the shapes, and you're also going to have a musicality come out. Okay, now this, one last one. So this is... Hey. <laughs> and the... How 
good is your French? And and even that. That's all the pentatonic scale. So when you go to play these songs, if these scales are under your fingers, they're going to be 30 times easier. So that's really, scale itself means the ability of something to form or function, the ability of something to do a lot of different things. Mm. And so it's like if we say a a car factory can't scale because they can't produce enough cars out a year. Well, Mm -hmm. a scale refers to something's ability to do something. And that's what these are for. They're for doing stuff, right? For their... You, when I you like learn that. songs, you put them to use. I like that. So that I love that. That's, that's it. Thank you, Dylan. Come to my TED Talk. It's so, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was really beautiful. Well, now I'm embarrassed. That's a really beautiful no, no. way to put it. Honestly. No, I Come love on, that. Stop. One because last that's question. The thing. Students oh, are ahead. trying to figure out how do I use how do I use these scales? How are they practical? Yeah. You sit there and you play scales over and over and over, and you're trying to figure out. Well, how does this apply to playing? You know, right. so you got to be able to put those two things together. And I think the way you explained it could help students really conceptualize putting it. Well done. One last question from Flotador7 oh. as Ms. Rocks. Yes. I loved your technique of the week when you played your song <laughs> Rebel oh. and the explanation of the five <laughs> hit finish. My question is for how many years I have to practice that to finish and nail it? <laughs> I don't know. I really don't know. <laughs> you know, it's, that's leap years or <laughs> you know, it's funny that you say that though, because that that that's something that we all struggle with as musicians. How long is it going to take until I'm able to do a thing? Hmm. When we see our favorite players playing and they're doing something so effortlessly, if you take a moment and think about how long they've been doing that thing how long Mm. have they been playing that lick it's something that has become a part of who they are and so they're so easily able to express it on their instrument but i don't think anybody thinks oh i've been doing that for so long or i've been doing that for 20 years or i have to do that for 20 years it's really about just doing it making it a part of who you are making it a part of something that you that becomes like home to you on the bass Mm. or on your instrument and eventually when you start doing it you will wow people and they will be so amazed and they'll ask you, well, how long have you been doing that? And you wouldn't even be able to give them an answer. Right, because right, you enjoyed yeah. the journey. You yes. didn't worry about, you weren't counting the miles on that one. That's fantastic. You know, Divinity, a highlight of last year was when you performed one of your songs for us. So we're going to oh. ask you to do that for us again. It's time for you to show off and inspire again. Uh, I believe you're going to do something from uh, from last year's album, uh, Ready, Set, Go, correct? Yes, I put out a children's album not too long ago. Uh, oh, wow. I put out a children's <laughs> album last year. It's called Ready, Set, Go, and there's a song on the album that uses the pentatonic scale. A really good friend of mine, Steve Lawson, says that when he teaches his students the pentatonic scale, he likes to pull this song out. (laughs) Oh, fantastic. Yeah, it's kind of cool. cool. Yeah, okay. So I'm going to play, I'm going to play a little bit of it for you. Live fade, fade, people. Live fade. Very rare. Very rare. 
tricky to pull off. The judge is yeah. going to score you well on that one oh, there. Really? Yeah, that Absolutely. Was, thank you so much. Well, and I heard that I heard that that minor pentatonic mode all over the place. That was such a great demonstration of that. What a great That's choice. Thank you so much for sharing that with us. And and yeah, for you kids out there, grab grab the Ready Set Go album from last year. I like it. Divinity Rocks. Um, now, Divinity. Of course, you're a master player. You're a natural performer, and you're a great teacher. So you're going to assign the homework. Uh oh. Oh. <laughs> oh, do you have the homework? Okay. Oh, you mean I have it in front of you? So do you? the homework for the beginners. Okay. Just practice playing your major and minor pentatonic scales. Try to connect them. To connect mm -hmm. the major and minor because they're right, right next to each other. The intermediate players begin connecting all the modes on the fretboard using the different shapes. Get to know the <laughs> shapes. Move up and down. Ascend, descend, ascend, descend. Oh. And for you advanced players, you already know, create your own riffs and groovy bass lines using the pentatonic scale. I'm sure you're already doing that with your bands live on stage and on the records you're making. You know, let's bring that funk back. Love it, love it. You taught us how to play in the groove last year, and this year you're <laughs> teaching us what notes to put in the groove. I dig that. Um, thank you. Stick around. Dylan's going to uh, 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 have his little spotlight here, but we're going to come back and talk a little more. Dylan, what have you got for us today, buddy? Oh, what a what a treat. It's I'll a rich one, what. isn't it? It's a really yeah, rich episode. That, is, that, is, that song was killing, too. That was that was fun. I did some hip shaking. Did you really? Oh. So uh, I, I did. My hips and, moved. And they were hit. And they were his. <laughs> they were mine. They were mine. <laughs> so you know, this is a great part of the show because we get to we get to give away a piece of gear to a lucky Fender Play subscriber, who simply has to use Fender Play for a minimum of twenty one minutes or three seven minute sessions called streaks. I got my streaks today. You can get your streaks learning the uh, the pentatonic scale right after this uh, this show. So. Um, and if you are picked, again, you're automatically entered to win just simply by using the site. If you are picked, you get to pick from guitars, basses, amplifiers. I don't think we have harmonicas, but we have a lot of different things you can pick. And uh, do you guys want to hear who won this week? Yes. Very, very much so. Can you very, give very me a so. pentatonic warm up here to, to kind of like, what key? Bring me what in key? With what key? Give, give me the key of C. Hut! 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 Hey! Hey! Ruben M! Ruben M! Congratulations, Ruben M. Ruben M. Way to go, Ruben. Congratulations to you. Now, Ruben, make sure you check your email for confermation and you'll get to enjoy your new guitar, bass, amp, whatever it is you choose. He can Dylan, choose what whatever. Else do you have? Ruben can choose yeah, he can whatever. Choose no, it's like, yeah. It's, he, we it's can't like, win, though. It's just them. Yeah, yeah it's just him. Well, All well, right. Well, <laughs> what else do you have, man? Well, yeah, so there's tons of new stuff on the site, and I wanted to highlight some of the new bass stuff that's on the site, because we have a bass episode. We have the fantastic Divinity here today, but uh, the the Funk Bass Riffs Collection. So this is this is taking a bunch of the sort of, uh, you know, most seminal riffs, the funk riffs on bass, and smashing them into one spot so that you can become a comprehensive funk bass player. I know, it's scary, but you can do it. So uh, I'll give you an example. So like one is a... <laughs> And there, there, you know, several of them are, are are teaching all the different techniques that you need to know. So all the things that Divinity is doing to make the bass talk, and again to kind of express uh, her essence or as an individual, you can tell the person's coming out when they're playing. That's what's so great about funk. So you can check that out on the collection. It's on the site. Do it today, right after the show. Do it. Okay. Fantastic. Don't thank wait. you so much, Dylan. Thank you very much. And a huge thank you once again to Divinity Rocks for yeah. helping us today with, with the, the pentatonic scale on bass and how to be creative with it and be expressive. Woo! Now, Divinity, Hi. we want to hear what you have coming up. <laughs> I love you guys. Plug away. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm playing at Club South in Philly on March 17th with my band. It's going to be pretty cool. We're going to play some new songs. We're going to play some old songs. We're going to play some covers. Um, I'll be in Detroit on March 26th with Jessica Care Moore's Black Women Rock. We're going to be celebrating oh, wow. the life of Betty Davis. Um, oh. If you have kids, please go check out the Ready, Set, Go album. It's streaming everywhere. It's on Bandcamp. And what's really cool about it is that there are two books that are based off of two of the songs on the album. Scholastic mm. published a book called Happy and Healthy which is a song wow. on the album and also a song and uh, a book called me plus you so you can go to divvyrockskids.com and check those out and get your kids moving and grooving to some groovy beats by divinity rocks 
Wow. That's fantastic. That's I was gonna, and you know, I, I believe producer Perry is going to be at that uh, Club South gig in Philly. He so, should right? come through. Yeah. It's going to be fun. Bring, oh, I'm sure it will. It'll be very, very fun. Uh, now, everybody else, there, please, thank you for watching. Keep safe. Keep practicing. And we'll see you next week at the same time in the same bat channel. Now, we're going to go out. Everybody, get ready to hit a, a, a G chord or, or type the capital G in your keyboard. But Divinity is going to give us some G pentatonic bass work for everyone to go out on the count of four. You right? Ready? Oh, let's One, do it. One, two, three, four, go. Boom.